Please open your Bible and turn with me. We're, we're going to root. What are we doing? Do you remember what we're doing? Yes, we're just working one word. You should have a verb sheet. Hishtachavu. Hishtachavu lehishtacha. What's the, the um, infinitive? Lehishtachavot. So we're moving to root. Bet. Hasid. Eser. Yeah, it's usually pronounced nochria. Tipolo paneha. She fell on her face. And here is tishtachu. So this looks a bit like something we already saw. Who is this uh, conjugated for? Right, Ruth is the one doing it, right? Who is she, who is she with? Boaz. Okay, they're having lunch. Or he's going to invite her to lunch. <coughs> this is how you get invited to lunch. You fall on your face and you bow down. Um, tishtachu. So we, we saw a form that was similar to this. What did we say this is? This is third person, feminine, singular. Perfect. Third person, feminine, singular, imperfect. Okay. We had another one that ended in U. That was a third person, imperfect. What was that? Yishtachu. Do you remember where, where we found it? It was the first one we looked at. Abraham, when the vi three visitors come. She, uh, so she's falling on her face. She bowed down. Artsa, uh -huh, groundward. Vatomer Elav said to him, Madua Matsati Chenba Enecha. Why have I found favor in your sight? Lehakireni. Uh -huh, that, you, that you even take notice of me. Vaanochi Nochria. I am a foreigner. Uh, Mizmor. Memhe. Pasuk. Let's look up the Pasuk. What is it about? It's about the king and what about the king? The king's wedding. That's right. This is the king's wedding psalm. Uh, pasuk, famous for Yitav. I think maybe we have never had this. Ta'av. This is the root. Taf Aleph Bav. And uh, it means to desire. You know where you see it? They wanted the quail, right? Mm -hmm. They were desiring the quail. And they ate it and it came out their nose. And then they died, I think. Mm -hmm. The people died. There was something where they were <laughs> desiring something. <clears throat> and they died. And they named the place Kivrot. Kever. Kivrot. Hata'ava, the graves of the desiring. The king desires what? Your beauty. Yafeh. He who Adonaiyach. He is your Lord. Behishtachavi. What form is this? Feminine? Singular? You. It's not perfect. It's a command form. So the command form will have you at the end. It is, listen, it's got a command form ending. But what is this hey is confusing at the beginning because it's a hit pa'el. So it looks like the beginning of a past tense. But what happens in the hit pa'el in the command form is that you get a hey. Malachim bet. Perak hey. Pasukah So this is the story of Naaman, Naaman. He was a leper. And remember what happened? He got healed after his pride moment. He, he went down to Jordan and dipped himself and he was healed. <clears throat> and so then he comes back. And, um, and he's worried about something. What is he worried about? When his, when his master goes in to bow down in the Beit Ramon, Ramon is their name of their god there, uh, when, when the master bows down and the master's leaning on him, right, that he might also have to bow down. And he said, I hope that Yahweh is going to excuse me from this, okay? So, so here we are. What does it say? Le davar hazeh. For this thing, Yislach Yahweh. Excuse, Licha, pardon me, Le Avdecha, your servant, Bevo Adoni Beit Rimon. Now, who's going? When he comes, who? My Lord, he's coming into Beit Rimon. I don't think they're worshiping pomegranates, okay. Lehishtachavot, so to worship. To worship. He's going into the house of his God. He's going to worship. Yes, he's going to bow down, but. There's always, and, yeah. you know, the idea of worship behind it. Shama there. Vehu nasha'an al yadi. So the root of this is sha'an, shin ayin nun. I think it's in Psalm 23. Lord and my staff, Marat and my staff, mishantecha. It's the thing that you lean on. Your staff is one of the things you lean on. So when he is leaning on me in the nifal, on my hand, vehishtacha veti. So this is for who? So this is first person, singular. First person, singular. It's perfect. So when I bow down, why is he bowing down? Because he, the guy's leaning on him and the guy's bowing down. So he has to make some accommodation for holding up his, his master. <clears throat> In the next big thing there, 
Bahishtachavayati is a, it's a construct infinitive in my bowing down. It has more like a gerund meaning to it. But there's no place for it on your chart, so you don't have to write it down. Beit Rimon. Yislach na Yahweh la'avdecha b'davar hazeh. Please, Yahweh will excuse me in this. Excuse your servant. Okay, so he's getting permission in advance because it's an... Uh, we have situations like that. We wind up having to do things that are really not in our heart to do. Taking but taking your, did you have to do that? Take your parents to church on Christmas? Yeah, maybe she might have to take your grandma. Divrei hayamim aleph. Can you remember? Where is divrei hayamim? Divrei hayamim. Tav zayin. Tet zayin. Esrim. Batesha. Can you find Divrei Hayamim in your Bible? Where will it be? It's the last book. Havu Yahweh Kavod Shemo. Present. What are we giving him? Kavod Shemo. Glory to his name. Honor to his name. And what else? Se'u. So what is Se'u from? Nasa. What are we carrying? A mincha. An offering. <clears throat> it's a grain offering. Uvo'u lefana. Come. Come before him. Before his face. Hishtachavu, the command form. <laughs> two two vavs there, right? <clears throat> so what is it? If it's a command form, what person is it? Who, what else are we going to put here? Plural. Masculine plural. In the hitpa'el, in the hitpa'el, the command forms still have the hey at the beginning. Okay. What else has a hey at the beginning in a command form? Nifal and he feel. Bahadrat kodesh. Kodesh, you know. Hadar is beauty, the beauty of holiness. The beauty of holiness is not something that we, that we relate to in any ordinary sense. Because what do we think is beautiful? And what, what does the world teach us is beautiful? Please. Physically pleasing. What is, what's, what is some things that are classically beautiful? Symmetry in art is very important, right? And then, then it goes way out and it does like, you know, yeah. Dolly or Picasso or something. Yeah. What I mean for but it's all about what you see. Or well, they're beautiful sounds. Beautiful, they're beautiful music. But what is the beauty of holiness? What does that look like? It doesn't look like anything, does it? It doesn't <laughs> sound like anything. How do you know? How do you know something's holy? And do you appreciate that it's beautiful? Holy is beautiful. Well, it, God is holy, that's yeah. right. Objective. By the fact that he created it, does that make it beautiful? He made it beautiful for us to enjoy it. I don't know if God sits up there and he goes, wow, look at all those trees. Isn't that beautiful? I, I don't know. But we can look at it. We can look and say, wow, those trees are beautiful. He says it was good, but good, I don't know, is good beautiful? Holiness, it's hard, it's hard to get your mind around. It's hard to express verbally. But by definition, holiness is beautiful, uh, especially for young people who are might be looking for significant others. Holiness is beautiful, not all those others. Right, you think about Greek statues, and, and there's, I don't know, if you go in a museum, for example, and you go, the Greek statue part of the museum, right? You know, And there's, there's, um, there's a sense of quietness and even holiness. People revere that. Okay, so it is. The Greek thinking is that beauty is holy, but Hebrew thinking is that holiness is beautiful. We are in Divrei Hayamim Bet, Lamed Bet. Hello. Is this not who? Is this not the same guy, Yechizkiyahu? He's a king, right? Hezekiah, Hesir et Bamotav. Hesir, to remove, to take away. What did he take away? The Bamot, the high places, and also his Mizbachot, his altars. Saying, who's he saying to? Judah and Jerusalem. Lifnei Mizbeach Echad. For one altar, tishtachavu. Second, masculine plural, imperfect. Okay, so now you can nicely compare them. Because remember, if we're thinking about the command form, we were thinking about taking off the tav of the second person plural. Okay, yeah. But it doesn't just take off the tav. The hey from the hitpa'el comes back. So they're exactly the same form. Alav. What's the alav to him or on him? On what is the him? On that altar. Burning incense, okay? Tucked here. We had it one time. Yechezkel. Perechet pasuk sheshesrei. Yahweh oti. 
So what is this Yahweh? It's a, it's a he feel, even though there's no yud there. He brought me where? Chatzer Beit Yahweh, the courtyard. Penimit. Penima means inside. So Penima, Penima means inside. Where are we? So I'm going on. Um, he's going into the inside courtyard of the Hechal, and here is the Petach Hechal, the opening of the. It's the temple because why? It's the palace of Yahweh. Hechal is a palace, but it also is the temple of Yahweh. <coughs> okay, it's about, not 25. Achorehem. They're achor. They're back. It's not the normal word for your physical back. But it's talking about their backs. Where are their backs towards? To the house. And what are they doing? And their faces are kedma, toward east. They're going east. And they are mishtachavitem. I don't know what's kind of... I mean, it's got a mem in it, right? <laughs> it should be some kind of participle. But I don't know what is the tem doing there. But the mem tells you it's a participle. And what are they worshipping? Eastward to the sun. That is why their back is to the temple. When, when God gave Moses the instructions for how to set up the thing, the mishkan, you go in, you're on the east side when you go in. So that when you walk in, you're facing the west. Okay, so that not when you walk in, you're facing the east and worshiping the sun. What sun worshippers do, they face the east. All right, one more, also in Yechezkeh. Let's see if we can find something else that's weird. Mem Vav. Mem Vav. Pasuk Shtayim. So who is coming? The prince. Okay, so this is talking about the um, millennial temple. Okay, here comes the prince. And he's coming, Derech Ulam. The road of the porch, the ulam, we were just talking about it. And the sha'ar michutz, what's outside? The gateway is outside. Va'amad al mezuzat ha'sha'ar. Hang on the doorpost. Okay, so we call the little box a mezuzah, but it's not. The box is not a mezuzah. The doorpost is a mezuzah. It's where we put the box, is where the word comes from. Okay, he's going to stand there uh, and the gate. And... Uh, the Kohanim are going to do his Ola. They're going to help him do his burn offering, because that's the job of the priest, right, is to take care of the burn offering. And also a different kind of offering, his peace offering. And his Tachava. It's, it's the perfect form, right? right? It's third person, masculine, masculine singular perfect. Huh? But it's reversed because it's and. He will worship Al Hamiftan is the door jam, the threshold. Is that that's the correct word? The threshold of the Sha'ar of the gate. The Yatsaha Shahar and he's gonna go out the gate. Lo Yisager. It will not be shut. What binyan is it? Nifal. Yisager. Nifal will be closed. It will not be closed at Erev until the evening. Let's finish the psalm because we we just have a few verses. Romimu, exalt Yahweh Eloheinu. Vehishtachavu. What form is it? It's a command form. It's a plural, second person plural, command form. Worship. Hadom Raglav is his footstool. Kadosh Hu. Listen, you can only worship at his footstool because the rest of him is somewhere we don't even know where. But his feet come here. His feet come into the Holy of Holies, right? That's the footstool. All right, verse 6. Moshe. Aharon. What is the Kohanav? Who's priest? His, his, his priest. And who else? Samuel. Bukore are amongst, amongst the callers of, the callers of his name, Karim El Yahweh, calling to him, Bahu Ya'anem. He answers them. Yafi, seven. What's the Amud? The thing that is standing. The pillar of the cloud, good. And what are they doing? They're guarding. Uh-huh. Testimonies. And Chok Natan Lamo. He gave them a law. Yahweh Eloheinu Ata Anitem. Oni. Oni. What's Oni? Poor. He humbled them. Uh, he humbled them. And El Nose Hayita. So this Nose has to do with carrying of the burden of sin. In other words, he's going to... He's he forgives them. He carries the burden of their sin. Nakam. Nakam, I think maybe we never have. Do you know it? Nakam is its own root. It means uh, vengeance. He's also going to take vengeance for their 
deeds. These deeds are not particularly good deeds. We're going to sing the last verse. Romimu Adonai Eloheinu v'hishtachavu l'hakosho Romimu Adonai Eloheinu v'hishtachavu l'hakosho Ki, ki, ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romimu Thank you so much.